Joey, thank you. Well, we want to begin with some positive news for the travel industry and for those looking to go on vacation, perhaps this spring or summer. The CDC issuing new guidance, including for cruise ships. Amy Kiley has several updates. COVID-19 no longer controls our lives. That means the relaxation of more restrictions and guidance, including some related to travel. The CDC now says cruises don't pose an increased travel risk, but it suggests checking out individual ship health guidelines and getting fully vaccinated against COVID-19 first. The FDA just expanded the emergency use authorization for a second round of Pfizer and Moderna boosters for people 50 and older. The president now has his, but the CDC clarifies people don't need that extra shot to be considered up to date on their COVID-19 vaccinations. If you're over the age of 50 or you're younger than that and have uh, important comorbid uh, conditions, you should get boosted. In other travel news, 21 states are suing the Biden administration to end the transportation mask mandate before it expires April 18th. That's in addition to other lawsuits from groups of pilots and flight attendants. And travelers now can get pandemic information about the places they plan to visit in the U.S. or where they live on COVID.gov. Amid these changes, experts say to be ready for the Omicron subvariant to increase cases. In the last week, case rates in, in the United States have become flat. And you know, if you and I speak next uh, week at this time, we'll be talking about how they're now starting to rise. Congress has to provide the funding America needs to continue to fight COVID-19. And if we fail to invest, we leave ourselves vulnerable if another wave of the virus hits. I'm Amy Kiley reporting. And the Ministry of Education in Jamaica is expanding the use of metal detectors at the island's public schools on the heels of two deadly altercations. Minister Favel Williams said a full audit of the extent to which those detectors are already being used will also be conducted. She said detecting and confiscating items such as knives and scissors will form part of the ministry's effort to reduce the incidence of violence among students. Many of our schools have a walk through metal detectors. We as well directed our schools to begin utilizing, if they are not already do so, the metal detectors in our schools. Our records show that 36 schools were selected to benefit from the installation of walk through metal detectors. 27 schools actually had the walk through metal detectors installed prior to the COVID. Um, and we only interrupted this because uh, of the COVID-19 pandemic. And Minister Williams also asked school administrators to refer students to counseling if any weapons were confiscated. And while acknowledging that the use of those metal detectors would certainly help, uh, the minister admitted it is just the beginning. Well, American Vice President Kamala Harris welcomed Jamaican Prime Minister Andrew Holness to the White House this week. Harris, who is, as, who is of Indian and Jamaican descent, noted in her remarks on Wednesday that she grew up going to Jamaica and she shared that history with millions of other Americans who have their roots over the generations on the island. Well, the vice president also announced that a $20 million investment in Jamaica will assist in strengthening and expanding the island's commerce. She also touted 600,000 vaccines that were donated to Jamaica since the beginning of the pandemic. And she also thanked Prime Minister Holness for his partnership in condemning Russia's invasion of Ukraine. Well, fresh off their recent and sometimes controversial Caribbean tour, the Royals were back home in London attending a memorial service for Prince Philip that still has people buzzing. Roughly 1,800 guests packed Westminster Abbey, with the Queen making her first major public appearance since she was diagnosed with COVID, accompanied by her son, Prince Andrew. Kathy Park has more. Queen Elizabeth making a grand entrance and returning to Westminster Abbey for Prince Philip's memorial service. Her first public appearance in months, escorted by her second son, Prince Andrew, who recently settled a sexual abuse lawsuit in the U.S. There are lots of different theories swirling around about what that message was, whether there was a message. One theory is that this was the Queen giving her stamp of approval to her disgraced son. 
Despite concerns about the Queen's health and mobility after canceling past engagements, the 95-year-old rallied to pay tribute to her late husband in the same place they got married more than 70 years ago. She stood throughout the service, singing and praying, at one point appearing tearful. I think a lot of Brits really found it quite an emotional scene, quite, quite an emotional thing to be seeing, and a relief that she was able to carry out this duty. But a conspicuous no-show on Tuesday, Prince Harry, who stayed in America but will travel to the Invictus Games in April. People are wondering how many more big occasions like this are we going to see the Queen at? But this week, Britain's longest reigning monarch, back in the spotlight, showing the world her deep devotion to her prince. And the Queen has more public events on her calendar before her Platinum Jubilee celebrations this coming summer. But royal experts say they would not be surprised if she shares some of those responsibilities with Prince Charles. Well, exciting news for Puerto Rico as the ninth edition of the World Stand-Up Paddleboard Championships will be held in San Juan this coming October. Our Francis Felix has the details. The governor of Puerto Rico, Pedro Pierluisi, and the International Surfing Association announced the celebration of the ninth edition of the World Stand-Up Paddleboard Championship that will take place from October 28 to November 6 in San Juan. More than 400 athletes from 40 countries will participate in the event and it will take place in the Laguna del Condado and the San Juan Bay. For the banker, Richard Carrion, who leads the organization committee, this event is a first step to also bring the Paralympic surfing to the island. For Carrion, this event will serve as a boost to provide organizations the tools to develop the sport at the local level. The competition could generate some five million in hotel rooms, taxes, expenses of the athletes and visitors. The Paddleboard World Cup returns after two years due to the COVID-19 pandemic. The last edition was held in Salvador in 2019. From Puerto Rico, Frances Felix. Well, now to the Turks and Caicos. Another group of military graduates are welcomed home after a grueling eight-week training. Our One Caribbean News, DeAndre Hamilton, was there for their festive welcome home. Turks and Caicos continues to build its first military trained regiment and the second group of graduates from the legendary Sandhurst Military Academy were on Sunday greeted at the airport by their relatives, fellow officers and the sound of We Funk Junk Canoe. For Jaheem Glinton, Earl Henry and Dixie Smith, who is the first TCI woman to graduate Sandhurst, the welcome home was the icing on the cake. The way it's a feeling that shows other young women like me that we can do it. As my female friends always say, it's time to put away the heels and put on the boots. So I have my boots on and I can put my heels on as well. Uh, this is definitely a big surprise. We were not expecting this coming off for eight hours across the Atlantic. But, uh, you know, we're, we're very humbled by it. Uh, we can definitely see that the support of the Church of Gonzalez is, is behind us. And we're very excited about the future ahead for the TCI Regiment. Eight weeks of training, grueling training to ready their minds and their muscles for the demanding roles of the recently commissioned TCI Regiment. And a graduation attended by relatives, their commanding officer, Lieutenant Colonel Ennis Grant, and the TCI's governor, Nigel Dakin. A very good friend of mine now because he's such, he's such a, good per, a good person to talk to. He's, he's very relatable and him having been to Sandhurst before us, it made it really relatable for him, for, for us actually. Because it's not like there's a lot of people who wouldn't understand some of the things that we went through at Sandhurst. But since he's already done it, he's already lived the experience. It's very, it's, it's easy for him to relate to us, and it it was really, it was it was good to have somebody to speak to about those kind of things. All say it was an incredible experience, which motivates them to serve their country well. For now, the crew is just happy to be reunited with, especially their littlest loved ones. DeAndre Hamilton reporting.